flew here. Yeah, flying. Everybody hates flying, don't they? Because you're all thinking of the same thing. Well, we're either going to get there or we're not. You know what I mean? You go down in that plane, you know it's not going to miss the ground. The ground's not going to open up. Yeah, oh, Jesus, it opened up. We're on Venus. Think we'll get the luggage? Because you do, you go up to that counter, you're a wimp. You go, yeah, is there any chance I'll make it? I hate that. Worse than flying those, taking people to the airport. You always have to be tricked into it. You ever notice that? Hey, what are you doing tomorrow? <laughs> Nothing. Good, could you give me a ride to the airport? <laughs> well, what time's a flight leave? 6 a.m. I like to get there an hour early, so pick me up, say, 4. You get up at 4, you leave your slippers on out of defiance. I'm not putting shoes on. I don't care if there are bunnies on these slippers. You're out there driving at 4 a.m. People are coming home from parties. You turn down their street, they're all cheerful. They're out on the boulevard doing the hula, you know? They're going to Hawaii. Get in! They always try to cheer you up. Well, at least there's no traffic. Good, maybe they won't find your body. You get to the airport, it's 5 a.m. Now you're all wound up. <laughs> Where can I go? <laughs> the only thing open is 7-Eleven. Hi! How are you? Who's at the airport? <laughs> Police are looking. What the hell's wrong with that guy? Oh, leave him alone, Bill. Christ, he's been in the airport. <laughs> How do you know? Christ, look at his shoes. <laughs> yeah, airports are no fun. I never asked anyone to take a cab. Never check your bags. I had a horrible nightmare. I lost my bags once. Pee Wee Herman had my underwear. <laughs> Running down a terminal. Rawr, rawr, rawr. Give me those. <laughs> and no matter where I go, somebody can beat my ticket price. Do you have that friend? Went to London, Louis? What'd you pay for those tickets? 600. There for two bucks. <laughs> Airfare, car, hotel, everything. <laughs> and security at the airlines. No one feels secure. Don't you ever want to go behind there with them and go, hey, come here. Check that guy again. <laughs> and they can't though, because they're too busy with some guy from Texas going, it must be my buckle. <laughs> My gate's always gate 80. <laughs> Are we there yet? And you get to the gate early, because you listen to the airlines. Get there early. Going Monday? Go down there Sunday. <laughs> you get there an hour early. The only people there are you and a guy cleaning up, you know? You feel so stupid. Big donkey ears pop up in your hair. You ever get donkey ears? You only get them when you're cocky about something. Like if you're going towards a door and it's a push and you pull or a pull and you pull. Somebody always is right behind you. Jackass. Then you have to go down that tunnel to the plane. No one ever comes back. <laughs> There's always that flight attendant at the other end going. Come back to Jamaica. 
And the closer you get to the door of the plane, the dumber you become. By the time you reach that flight attendant, you can't even read your seat number. Is that a nine? Is that in the plane? Do you have any idea where it is? Thank you. And somebody always pushes you when they're, you're trying to get on the plane. Like they're... You always want to rear back and go, watch it! You know that thing your brother would do to you? Stop it, lady! We're all gonna take off at the same time now. You get to your seat, you're so happy, you put the stuff up above. No matter what, if you're the first person on the plane, it's full. <laughs> Who's this a stop? <laughs> the airlines, they know how to relax you, don't they? They bring you peanuts. <laughs> you're happy to see them. Oh. <gasps> peanuts. Oh. <laughs> uh. I'm safe now. <laughs> it's true, those peanuts are important. Have they ever passed you by and forgotten about you? <laughs> the non-peanut section? <laughs> Paid $600 for these. Uh, <laughs> They finally give them to you, they throw them at you. Well, at least we got them. <laughs> Sometimes they'll bring you another bag. Huh? Oh no, four peanuts is enough for me. <laughs> you ever lay them on the tray table next to you? That drives that person crazy. <laughs> You gonna eat those? I might. I'm not sure. You ever get in the wrong seat? That's a horrible thing. Because people don't say you're in my seat. They make sounds now. You're trying to get settled. And they go, <sighs> I'm sorry, am I in your seat? You ever have a baby by you? In front of you, crying? You have your baby? Was that the baby on the flight down here? You, you know, it feels so sorry for the mother because she's looking at the baby and going, you know, I've never hit you before, but there's 300 people who want me to beat you right now. <laughs> so you got to shut up. And they always look over at the seat. Uh, you remember? They never have control of their neck, yeah? <laughs> <sighs> Babies always make that sound. That's a good sound to make, really. <sighs> Anyone bothering you? Just do that to him. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? <laughs> All right, get out of here now. That noise. Who's responsible for him? Get him. <laughs> you know, you're throwing peanuts in the baby's mouth. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I like first class. That's great up there. On the plane first, off the plane first. No peanuts up there, almonds. That's right, or cashews too. That's right. They always close that curtain on everybody in coach. I always feel sorry for them, you know. I always keep them up on what's going on, though. We're eating now. <laughs> hey, this is sturdy stuff, huh? Nice shoes, what? Yeah, I like these shoes. I got them at a bowling alley. I don't know. I think it's the name of the place. FV. It's really, it's the name of the place. I'm not sure. But I said, hey, these are nicer than my shoes. No, I paid for them. 
My mom always runs all the Christmas stuff, the potluck dinners. Do you guys have those? Yeah, everybody brings food. Somebody always brings that lime green jello. <laughs> My mom comments on what everybody brings to the potluck. Oh, look. The Johnsons brought chips. They're rich, you know. Hey, Mom, the Hendersons are on the phone. What do you want them to bring? Oh, just tell them to come. They're real poor. They're all on dope. <laughs> Freezing. People die in this cold weather, don't they? Spring comes, that snow melts. <laughs> Gee, there's Earl. Never made it home from that party. Those are good gloves. And cars don't work in this weather. You ever notice how you treat your car? You're so nice to it. You talk to it before you go, okay, I'm going in the house now. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Start for me, all right? Okay? See you tomorrow. Here, I'll put a blanket on you. Good night. You get up the next morning, look out. Oh, that freezing weather. I can't go out. You warm up. You ever notice how you kind of warm up, huh? Go out to try the car. I hope it starts. Huh. Hello. How are you? Mind starting? Hey. Oh. Should have got those covers. Everybody has their own system, too. You never know. Your dad teaches that. Now just pump it twice and halfway down again. One, two, and halfway down. You go three, you'll flood it out. One, two. Well, you don't want to try it all the way, do you? Okay, I'm going to try it now. Oh. You start talking to the car. Oh, come on, baby, please. <laughs> okay, give you another half. Okay. Please start. Please start. Please start. Please start. Uh-uh. <laughs> Piece of junk! Go in the junkyard! Pump this to the blood zone. Oh, no, go. You better start the junk. Go, 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 go. Mmm. That horrible noise that knows there's no juice left. Mm. Uh, hey, hey, could I use your jumper cables? Our cables? Take the kids. Or else they give you the one with the end missing. You ever have those? Because people love their jumper cables. Uh, they'll show them to you. Look at these. <laughs> Look at the teeth on these things. I'm thinking about taking these home with me next year. <laughs> and you'll ask anyone to help you. Do you ever notice that? Hey, lady, lady, come over here. Lady, get in the car. Just turn it when I... Okay, I'm going to hold this on. Okay, and they're in there, and they can't hear you, and they're in there going, Should I try it? Should I start it now? Should I try it? Should I try it? Should I pump it? Should I start it now? Should I try it? Should I start Come on, Christ, let's take a blow! Because you got that end, you know, holding it on there, and all you can think of is, you know, sometimes batteries just blow up. <laughs> the car won't start. People call you, what are you doing? My car won't start. <laughs> My car, you know, that car it won't start. You ever call a station? What? 
Hey, Bill, guy wants us to come out and start his car today. <laughs> Are you a millionaire? <laughs> My dad used to get so mad and desperate, he would take charcoal, break the, the barbecuer's legs off, put charcoal in it, start it, get it good and hot, and put it under the motor. <laughs> and he didn't want me to do drugs. Oh, you will go out in cold weather, though. You ever notice that if you're out of something? Well, that convenience store is open down the block. I might be able to get there in three seconds. You get to the store, there's 50 people in there. Hi, how you doing? Got any jumper cables? It's either stay there, eat another burrito, and die. Why do we eat those things? There's no expiration date on it. <laughs> Jeez, is that a burrito near Earl there? Still good. And the people that work at those convenience stores, I don't go in there sounding like them, but by the time you leave, <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> what? What you got? Well, you got Slurpee. Well, what size you got? Well, we got this size. And then we got that 55 gallon drum. Well, what's the difference in price? A nickel? Well, there you are with that barrel. You, you feel so stupid. People are looking at you. Well, what would you do, lady? It was a nickel difference. <laughs> Can't you see him training these guys in the big auditorium? All right, repeat after me. What do you want? All right, report to work Monday. You put people behind counters, they're out of it. Like kids that work at fast food places. Yeah, can I get a couple burgers, a fry and a Coke? <gasps> Cindy, get up here, I'm swamped! <laughs> you know what's worse? The worst job, that photo mat job. Where do these people take breaks? What, do they shut that window and duck down in there? <laughs> Have you ever gotten out of the car to check? Hey! Hey, are you in there? Huh? Yeah, I'm on my break. Did you get that out of here? <laughs> what a boring job, huh? After the first five seconds, you've seen the entire store. You know they look through your pictures. I went up there one time, I didn't even have to give her my name. She went, here. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to be from the Midwest. Like other places, you know, are not as nice. You know that. We have our share of weather problems though in the summer. We have the tornadoes. That's always a big issue with people, those tornadoes. They always have, There's a tornado warning. There's a warning. That's really good to know. Warning. What does that mean? They're an unspotted, just, you know, they could show up. Should we go out? Well, there's a warning. As long as you're not in a mobile home, I don't think you have anything to worry about. Right? That's why they call them mobile homes, you know. <laughs> well, we used to live over there, and then there we go. Moved. It took us a half hour to move. <laughs> You always see that piece of straw through. That's the story you hear from your dad. Oh, Christ, that's arm so bad. Piece of straw right through a tree. <laughs> Even if you saw that, you wouldn't believe it. Where is that? That's a hole. Someone put that in there. Yeah, people are bad. And the hurricanes, people that live in those areas. They warn those people, but it doesn't seem to matter, you know? Hey, hurricane coming. 300 mile an hour winds. <laughs> No, we're going to stick it out. 
I got plastic on the windows here. And... <laughs> you always see them afterwards. The house is dilapidated. The, the only thing left is a Sony TV, you know. <laughs> well, we're going to rebuild. <laughs> the Trinitron's okay. We're going to stay with some friends up in Minnesota. They got a trailer home. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because we rename the uh, hurricanes every year. Hey, Hurricane Charlie's coming. <laughs> hey, was Charlie here yet? No? It's not that damn Donna, is it? <laughs> or floods. That's another thing I've never understood. Why would you want to live in a flood area? <laughs> After the first time, don't you get it? <laughs> you can always recognize those people. They got the watermarks up here. <laughs> And in the town, there's always that plaque, 1965, you know? Right it's a horrible thing, those things. And there's always those four people when the cameras come in, they're on a roof of a house, you know? <laughs> we made it! <laughs> hey, what channel will we be on? <laughs> you know, and they got the keg up there, they're having a good time. <laughs> There's always that one dog, too. Do you ever notice that? <laughs> oh, Christ. Where's my house? <laughs> you never see any cats. Oh, Christ, there's a storm coming. Let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> and you see those people with the boat at their house? The front door, they got the boat. How you doing? Yeah. Oh, we're doing all right. Hey. Nothing on the second floor is damaged. <laughs> Honey, I told you the boat would come in handy. It's amazing to me how you, why you go through that stuff. But I live in California. <laughs> you know, people always do this when you go to California, they always call you and go, Louie, yeah, we're thinking about coming out and visiting you. Yeah? Well, think again. <laughs> when they come out, I always do two things. Buy them tickets to Disneyland and Universal Tours. That's the big thing out there. Disneyland. Everybody loves that. Disneyland. <laughs> I think it's boring, too. You know what would have been great is when you're on drugs when you're a kid. You remember that? <laughs> that big Mickey comes at you. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Look at that thing. <laughs> hey, get that goofy thing out of here. Hey, that Goofy's teeth are moving. <laughs> In Universal Tours, that's kind of boring. You know, they have that. They have that big King Kong that comes down. Oh! You know, and you're going, get out. Get out of here, King Kong. It would scare you, though, if it reached down and grabbed someone, wouldn't it? <laughs> Come on now, this isn't funny. <laughs> and then at the end it went. I mean, I don't want the person eating, but it's, you slid down the thing, it would scare you. People would be lining up from here to, you know, Europe to get in that. I hear the thing swallows the person. <laughs> I'm gonna see that. That's where you'd have your dad sit, isn't it? Dan, why don't you sit there? <laughs> Hey, why don't you have mom hold your wallet, Dad? Because <laughs> you'd pay big money to see your dad up in King Kong's hand, wouldn't you? Oh, cry, pal! God damn it! <laughs> when you go on vacation, though, people always want you to go place. I was just in Florida. People are, you going to Florida? Oh, go to that stone crab restaurant. Ever been there? Melt in your mouth. I don't like stone crabs. Oh, you'll like these. <laughs> you go, go to Florida. Go. Have you been there? Because you go to Florida and you don't think you're going to do anything. And then the second day there, you go, what do you want to do? Well, go to that stone crab restaurant. <laughs> Melt in your mouth. 
You go over there and there's a 300 people in line. And there's always a person in front of you who wants to talk to you. Yeah, we heard this place is drip. Hey, turn around. Turn around. I'm on vacation to get away from people like you. No, I just thought, hey, turn around. And you get in there, you feel so stupid, they tie that bib on you. And you get that bill. 300. Those things were horrible, but 300. You walk out of the place, you know, disgusted, walk into the street, people are screeching to a halt because you have those bibs on, they think you're with the highway department. You try to get it off and it just pulls like those potato chip bags. Get this thing off! And that's why your friend tells you about that, because they've been there. And so as soon as someone says, you're going to Florida? Going to Florida? Oh, go to that stone crab restaurant. I got ripped off, you might as well. You always buy things on vacation you'd never buy anywhere else. You ever notice that? <gasps> Honey, look, fresh vegetables. I've never seen those before. Look, corn, 12 for a buck. Oh my God. Give me 10 bucks worth. It feels so stupid you have corn. You're in a hotel, you can't cook it. I was just in San Diego. Anybody from San Diego here? Every time you mention San Diego, people go, oh, go to San Diego? Go to that zoo. <laughs> like there's something going on there, you know? <laughs> You'd land in San Diego. Were you going to go to a hotel? No, take it to that zoo. <laughs> you get there, it's like 50 bucks to get in. I said, lady, we just want to look at the animals. We don't want to take any home with us. <laughs> and that's a big zoo. Oh, man. You're going to walk in that thing. I started looking at that sign. What's up that hill? Giraffe? <laughs> I've seen that. <laughs> but zoos are boring. You know, basically, here's what you do. You go over there. What's over there? What's that? Australian deer. What's this here? New Zealand deer. <laughs> the same damn deer. <gasps> oh my God. Look at that monkey's butt. <laughs> Is that supposed to be like that? Should we call somebody? Or what? You kids, get away from there! Oh. Put some huggies on that thing! Oh. Give me the camera. They always have an exotic animal, too. They have the pandas there now, in fact. Everybody, yeah, that's what people do. Oh, pandas, come on, Louie, pandas. Everybody, come on, there's, there's pandas down there. Come on. And people think, you must think, that animal, huh? He must go, oh, Christ. I'm going in here. I'll put my paw. There's his paw. That's enough. My dad would have thought he'd be safe anyways, you know, in his car. He loved his car. Who? His Bonneville. It's my Bonneville. He didn't introduce it to people. It's my Bonneville. It's my family over there. It's an American-made car. You drive it head-on to a train and live. You gotta try that, Dad. He loved that car, man. Try to get the car. That was a big deal. You know that? Hey, Dan, I cleaned the garage. I did the lawn. 
I built that addition. Can I use the Bonneville? Take the Rambler. Oh, it's got a pink door. When I was a kid, we didn't have doors on the cars. And he'd ask you those questions. Where are you going? Around the block. How many kids are going with you? Half a kid. And he'd give you those keys. he always give you a lecture with it. Now listen, I'm not giving you this car so you can screw it up. Well, then I don't want it. <laughs> you get the car. You get so goofy when you get a car and you're a kid. I got a car. Let's drive to Europe. <laughs> You get 300 friends. <laughs> you're driving anyway. Then you hit that tractor. You didn't even know you're in a field, did you? All your friends leave you. Good luck, Lou. <laughs> then that guy from the station comes out. <sighs> Always named Smitty. <laughs> they have that look, you know. This your dad's Bonneville? What'd you do, hit a train? Listen, Louie, I know your dad. Why don't you go inland or the hoist? I'll crush your legs. Okay. That's not so bad. Because having to take that car home is horrible, isn't it? You're driving it home and it's scraping the tire. Gonna be killed. You drive the car up in front of the house, your dad's in the window in the silhouette there. You think of psycho. You park the smash side away from the house, hoping Dean Jones will come out in the middle of the night and put flubber in there. So. You walk in the house, throw the keys on the table. Why not? They're of no use anymore. You're home awful goddamn early. You better not have screwed up that car. You won't be driving it anymore. Neither will you, but... Uh... <laughs> that was a frightening time, I thought. Oh, no, I'm going to get killed. It's the first time I thought, oh, no, I'm going to get killed. But I didn't know my dad had a plan. Oh, now I got something to use against you for the rest of your life. <laughs> dad, I was thinking about going to college. What? I'm still trying to pay that Bonneville off. <laughs> Look at that car, what a smash, and oh, it's wrecked complete. Nothing compared to the Bonneville. <laughs> then I had to work on it with him. That was a horrible experience. Every Saturday, he'd jack the car up, he'd land underneath it. My job, hand him tools. <laughs> Give me the 916! Huh? Here, take them all. <laughs> the only fun was when he'd hit his knuckle or something underneath it. tool would come flying out. So 916, look out! And he'd blame me. Get out of my light! <laughs> and you look down at that jack and you think, college or prison? Prison! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you thought your dad was tough, though. I always thought my dad was the toughest dad in the neighborhood. Kids were afraid of my dad. They wouldn't come to my house. We'll meet you about a block away. Your dad said he was going to kill me if I cut across the lawn again. So I did anyways. You know, you become aggressive when you drive. You ever notice that? Yes. You're driving. You're a nice person. Then somebody's going to pass you. Oh, you're going to try and pass me? Uh-uh. No, I'm over here now. Oh, you're going to go that way? No, oh, I own the whole road. <laughs> oh, no. I'm back. Oh, no. Get your own road. Pass someone else. <laughs> Do you ever almost uh, hit somebody? <laughs> and you didn't know it? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I almost killed that guy. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm coming. Oh, here he comes.
And they're over next to you at the stoplight going, come on, get out of the car! <laughs> and your brain's going, go on, Louie, go ahead, look over there. Louie. Louie. Look over there, Louie. Oh, Louie, he's mad. Look over there, Louie. Just glance over there, Louie. Come on. Ooh. I told you he was mad, Louie. And you look over there, and you feel so stupid when you look over there. You have to look, though, don't you? Ooh. You do dumb stuff. As long as you do this, they're satisfied. You ever know? Well, at least he did that, Christ. <laughs> I turn into my dad when I drive. All right. All right. Oh, come on. I have a life. Let's go. Ah, oh, Christ. Look at her. Now she's looking at her purse. What, she drop her brain in there? Come on. She's gonna park in that. Get, get out and tell her she won't fit in that spot. Get out there. God damn it. I had a gun on floor. Let's go, lady. Oh, Christ. I, want, I get in a car, I get like my dad. I never used to be like that. I get in the car, I, I sound like him. Christ, if I was the last person on earth, some moron would turn left in front of me. <laughs> I used to think my dad was crazy for saying that. Now I think you should be able to kill those people. I think you should be able to kill them if they turn left. Not forever, just 10 minutes. They turn left, boom. 10 minutes later, they wake up. It must have been a moron. You know who else are bad? People in these malls. They do that mall walk. You know, you're just trying to get to that store over there and they have the rest of their lives to be in front of you. Hey, could you hurry up? Huh? No, I have the rest of my life to be in front of you. No, you don't. They wake up 10 minutes later. Didn't I see him when I was driving the other day? The worst is at the movie when you're really into a good movie and all of a sudden from behind you hear, oh, this is the part where the guy gets killed. Oh. <laughs> you're right. This is the part where the guy gets killed. Seen any good movies? Attraction. Yeah, that was good. See Spielberg's new movie, huh? Yeah. yeah. Spielberg, he's, remember how hot he used to be? Quick impression of Steven Spielberg, though. 20, 40, 60, 80 million. <laughs> People in the Midwest talk about that, too. Spielberg, he's got to move money just to get to the toilet. He's so rich. <laughs> Except for that liberal friend in the kitchen doing the dishes. Yeah, Louie, but do you think he's happy? <laughs> what? I don't want to see you for 20 minutes. <laughs> I do a lot of killing in my act. <laughs> I'm really not for war, although I think we're going to have one. I think the way to cure these wars is to do things like drop M&Ms, peanut M&Ms, in the war zones where they're fighting. Because you know if you had a gun on someone and those things started falling. Why should we fight anyways? There's billions of them. Put our guns on for a while. I got a bag in the thing. We'll fill it up. I'll split them with you. About a half hour later. Oh. What were we fighting about? I don't know. I'm too sick. There were red ones in there. 
Because we think in America, we're kind of silly about this idea. We think if the bomb hits, it's going to go, ooh, the United States. <laughs> and there are people, you know, who think, you know these people that you talk to, oh yeah, if that bomb hits, I hope I'm right in the middle of it. So do I. There'll be survivors, you know. Oh, God. It'll be horrible. They'll come into town, what the hell happened here? <laughs> Those Hells Angels have been in town. <laughs> there'll be comedy afterwards, because there'll be survivors, so there'll be clubs. But what will be funny? <laughs> Imagine working really hard on a joke, get ready to deliver the punchline. All of a sudden, the guy in the front row, his foot falls off. <laughs> How the hell do you top that? <laughs> you have to rip your head off and toss it. Oh, that guy's good. <laughs> Think we'll ever see him again? <laughs> It'll be horrible. Men won't change. Dating? Well, she's not too badly burned. You'll all be following me. He knows where food is. <laughs> no more wars. I'm not for that. I'm for banquets. <laughs> Big potluck dinners. My mom could run them. <laughs> oh, look. Russia brought chips. Mom, Ethiopia's on the phone. What do you want them to do? <laughs> oh, just tell them to come. <laughs> Thank you very much. hate that when people come back out, you know? You're always ready to go, you know? Uh, okay. <laughs> Friday night in Chicago. Yeah. Hey, where's that? <clears throat> where's that, uh, where's that pizzeria Uno? That's my favorite place. Really? No, you're inviting me, aren't you? <laughs> hey, lady. What's your name? What's your name? Sophie. Sophie. Oh. Was that your choice to sit up there? Pizza. Hi, Sophie. Where are you from? Sophie. Poland. Poland. Well, thanks for coming in for the show. <laughs> I love your Pope. He's very good. So how is Poland? Cold up there too, isn't it? Very. Very. Well, you speak good English. <laughs> I heard you guys learn that real young. What do you do? What do I do? I'm a purchasing secretary. A purchasing secretary? You, you buy the erasers or what? <laughs> yeah, and give me a hundred pens. I'm running low. <laughs> I'm just kidding you, Sophie. She what? Really? Right off the boat? And no, are you an interpreter or do you have your hand in her back? What's your name? Phil. Phil, what do you do, Phil? A what? Facilities coordinator. Facilities coordinator. Yeah, well, I, I figure we need like six urinals. You know, friends are nice until they have too much to drink. You ever notice that? You could have a best friend. Five drinks is their limit, they have seven. They turn on you. Everything's going around really nice, everything all of a sudden. 
they get this look, you know. I said, I'm mad at you. You ever know how drunk sway? And their knees don't lock. And they're defensive about the fact that they can hardly stand up. I'm all right. I like when they try and get philosophical with you, the drunks. Louie! Life! Live it! And they pass out. It's a, you try to get them out of the bar. They wake up as you're passing the bouncer. Watch it! Or my friend Louie here will kick your ass! And then they always want to drive, no matter how drunk they are. I'm driving! I'm driving. Where's the car? All right, if I'm not driving, I want to eat. Let's go eat. I'm starving. They always want to eat. It's so funny. And when, they, when you walk in the restaurant with them, the waitress sees them. Oh, I quit. Because they always come in so loud. Here we are! We're here! Let me sit with you, honey. They always impose on other people. Honey, let me sit with you. Lady! Let me have something that you're eating. Come on, lady. I'm just kidding you, guys. They make those sounds. Ah, I'm drunk. I'm drunk. I'm drunk. I'm drunk. Who's drunk? I'm drunk. That's right. And they order foods that they don't have. Do you have any beets? And I was here before they had beats. Beats, 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 beats. All right, here's what I want. Pancakes, French toast, French fries, two eggs, corned beef hash, all with gravy on it, and beets on the side. Now, it's so horrible to be with those people, you know. And they always do the same thing. They get their food, they eat one french fry. And they stay like that, right in their food, you know. Of course, once in a while, just out of nowhere, they mention something. Hey, you got that five bucks you owe me? They're so drunk. And they get near like snow or something. Hey, snow, let's make angels in it. Hey, I'm drunk! I'm drunk. I'm sick. I'm sick, you guys. I'm drunk. I'm all right. Damn it. Still mad at you. I don't know why, but I'll think of it, so. Did you bring those beets with? I told her to wrap them up. I'm starving for those things. God damn it. Your whole family screwed our family over.
And I'm not kidding you either. I'm telling you right now, as soon as I figure out what you did, I'm gonna let you have it. That's right. I'm drunk. Hey, wanna go play pool? I'm drunk. Drunk. How you doing? All right. The hell is down there? What is that, a dime? Yeah, I knew I lost a dime. Your family owes our family an apology. I want it right now. God damn it. I'm drunk. I'm sorry, I'm drunk. I apologize to the United Nations. I'm drunk. Let me just sleep here. I'm, I'm really drunk. I'm a little drunk. Uh, what? Christ. Thanks. You guys really messed us all up. We were going along fine. We were winning the whole thing and you turned on us. <laughs> My sister's Catholic now. <laughs> oh, can't believe it. Yeah. Oh, well, you know what they say. You know what I'll tell you right now? If I had a minute for every time I did it, I'd be happy. <laughs> All right, we better get going because I got a test in the morning. Maybe I'm a little drunk, maybe I had a, a couple of beers too much, but you would too if you were at that place I work at. I don't like it! I'm gonna call my boss up right now. Son of a bitch. Hey, Harvey, I'm really mad at you. Harvey, I ah, eat chicken shit. Hey, there's another dime. <laughs> I'm getting rich. <laughs> Just remember one thing. Life. Live it. Yeah.